Hello people, here's a quick look at the seeded start and I'll just run through the options with you but you'll see as I go through it that a lot of these choices will be based around uh, how you want to play the game ultimately. So instead of clicking play now which will give you, um, if it's the first time you've played it, which will give you the settings they've decided on, um, set up game, it's not just setting up your difficulty, how many t turns you want it to take um, and your map size, uh, once you've clicked that you will actually come to this what's called the seeded start. Um, this gives you a lot more choices so it puts you on the path that you want um, to begin with uh, straight away so it helps to focus your efforts. Now this is awesome when you play it through the second time but the first time a lot of this will mean absolutely nothing to you. If you've played Civilization before brilliant then um, some of the things will make sense. Uh, if you haven't played Civilization and you haven't played this game then you'll probably be quite lost. So I'll just run through some of these. Obviously you can randomize it all if you just want a more uh, dynamic game I guess. Um, I am a little bit more controlling than that. I wouldn't really enjoy that unless I was setting myself up a chat. So ARC, um, if you haven't played Beyond Earth you won't know what a covert operation particularly means for this or what intrigue means. Uh, later on in the game you are able to send operatives to other cities. So you can steal science and you can steal technology from them. Um, that means that this will happen faster and it will cause more intrigue which means you can send more operatives and they'll be more likely to succeed. So that's one that would be difficult to figure out if you haven't played it. Pan-Asian uh, will give you an extra 10% production towards wonders and 25% worker speed. At the moment this is my favourite um, just because uh, it seems to fit with everything. Um, even with it going down a research sort of route then you, can st you still need to build things, you still need to build your wonders. I've been very very impressed with that one. Um, if you're starting off and it's your first game then I'd recommend that. Uh, Franco Iberia gain a free technology for every 10 virtues. So virtues are the diplomacy, um, sorry the culture the culture things from the previous civilization games so for every 10 virtues you do you'll get a free technology so really in the actual scheme of things that's probably about two free technologies by the time you've reached the end game um, might be useful you do get free technologies anyway going through that chart so you're probably going to get about two out of it Slavic Federation, orbital units stay in orbit for 20% longer and the first one gets a free technology. That is quite useful. Um, I don't use orbital units too much at the moment. Um, I've used them in a military victory. Um, but other than that, the free technology is probably more beneficial than the orbital units. Pol Australia, this is a very, very good one as well. Trade routes are crucial in this game. You can set up routes between cities which get you extra science, get you extra energy, get you extra production and food. Um, my first victory was based with uh, Pol Australia and this is very very useful. Um, I would also recommend that one, um, although not quite as much as the Pan-Asian. Uh, Kaviathan Protectorate, citizen outposts acquire new tiles twice as fast, so that's for very very rapid expansion. Um, you'll need to be considering what you're going down, uh, what kind of route you're going down and you need to focus. It's probably good with a harmony route uh, because you'll get lots of um, the biotechnology ones are good for food, uh, but you need to be considering your expansion. Brasilia units have 10% strength when in melee combat, it's probably uh, what you'd focus on if you're going for a domination victory, um, although I still think production is significantly better than that. African Union, 10% um, food in growing cities when they're healthy, so it's difficult to decide with that because obviously when you're expanding rapidly it reduces your health quite fast so it's not one that I'd go for. I've never really quite managed to remain healthy when expanding quickly um, but that will be very very good because again that will help you with a rapid expansion. Uh, now you choose a colonist, again you can randomise it. Um, these ones probably make a little more sense even if you haven't played this but you've played other civilization. So scientists plus two science in every city, that's very very good for research. Um, refugees, extra two of food in every city so it'll help you to expand faster. Aristocrats, extra energy and extra health. I think I used that one last time just when I was using quite quick expansion because it helps to mitigate some of the effects of making lots of cities. Engineers, plus two production in every city. Um, that's very very good for rapid expansion and making lots of units. I, I can't see where that wouldn't fit in. Um, I've used that one in the current city that I'm working on. Artists, plus two culture and plus one health. So any of these options is going to be brilliant for you. You just need to think what kind of victory you're going to go down. Um, and do you want to move through research? Do you want to have a militaristic focus? Um, but that one's a little bit easier to choose from. You can kind of just pick whatever you fancy. I went for production just because I hate waiting. 
Uh, you choose your spacecraft. So Continental Surveyor, I just, it, I'm never going to use it. Um, it reveals the coast, so it gives you the outline of, of, of the land. Um, if that's your thing, that's your thing. I, I don't see the point, really. Um, if anyone has any ideas, that would be great. Um, it's just not as useful as others. Retrograde Thrusters uh, lets you choose a wider area when you land, which is great. Um, you usually ten you, you tend to land in okay spots anyway. Um, it, it could be useful if you could get yourself on a coast, you've got more trade routes, um, you've got more resources. Uh, if there's some fire site or there's something good nearby, then you won't know until you've picked your planet anyway. So I tend to stay away from that one. Um, it might sound cheap, but if the planet's absolutely rubbish, I just do it again. Um, tectonic scanner, this one is very, very useful. Um, you don't need to develop anything to see petroleum, geothermal and titanium, so you'll end up with a lot of resources quite quickly and that's very, very good for trade and it really helps diplomacy. That's the one that I'd recommend um, to begin with. Uh, I, I've used that a few times, it's been very successful. Fusion reactor is the first one that I ever picked. Um, you start with 100 energy, which is essentially the currency, so I thought that that would be pretty useful. It does help you to buy some things if you need to, um, but again, I don't think that its long-term effects are felt as much as the tectonic scanner. Uh, life form sensor just shows you where alien nests are. At the start of the game, you can just ignore aliens anyway, and they won't attack you unless you do something to um, unless you do something to incite them. So uh, that's kind of useless as far as I'm concerned. Choosing your cargo to see what you bring uh, with you. So hydroponics will boost your expansion. Uh, laboratory will give you the pioneering technology, which I think is very, very useful. I, I would recommend that one because you get to send a colonist out straight away and you get started on two cities, which will give you a brilliant head start. Raw materials will build you a clinic, which helps to increase health and food. Uh, weapon arsenal, if you're going for a domination victory, then that's probably more useful, a soldier unit. Um, but again, it's probably not as useful as getting another city set up, so you double your production. And machinery is quite useful, actually, because you get a worker unit, so you can get things to start working your land straight away. Not too hard to choose from those. Then you choose your planets, so you can re-randomize your list, um, and then you kind of pick what you want. So if you pick, for example, the Atlantean world, there's loads of little islands, um, and that's probably easier if you want a peaceful victory because you're going to not be attacked as forcibly across the land. Um, they have to attack you with water units usually. Uh, you don't get someone showing up in your doorstep in two seconds without it being more obvious. Uh, Protean world is just one big land mass, and then the Terran world is pretty much like Earth. So that's the one I always go for. I just think it's a little bit more interesting, and it's more like Earth. Okay, so once you select all of those, you click next, and then that will take you to the game, and it will load it up, and it will drop you onto a planet, and then you uh, move on from there. Okay, check out my other guides, which will give you a few tips for uh, city screen, for research, for heading towards victories, and uh, others that I will pop up. If you liked the video, please click like, and um, subscribe for more. Thanks, guys.